competition is very rife. And we know we have moved from a seller's market now to a buyer's market. Today, consumers have several choices. And so for marketers and for companies, if we sit and just focus on acquisition or acquiring new customers and not on how we retain them, I can assure you that we'll be out of business very soon. So building relationships with our customers is key and critical in this time. Now within this difficult period, customers today are focusing on extracting the best value from every purchase. So one would ask, what is this value? A customer's perceived value is simply how a customer differentiates between the value they get from all the benefits from a product they buy and the cost, the difference between the benefits and the cost of this product, taking into consideration the fact that there are several alternatives in the market. Okay, so now let me define what customer retention is. I made just a simple definition, and customer retention I put as simply what activities or strategies companies take in order to maintain customer loyalty. But Ben, let me ask a few questions. And I don't know whether uh, our audience uh, or our listeners just take note of several surveys that have taken place uh, regarding customer loyalty and some of the output. For example, it costs five to ten times more to acquire a new customer than to retain an existing one. Did you know that? It costs five to ten times more yes. to acquire, acquire a, a new, new customer, customer than, than to retain, retain an, an old existing one. one. Yes. And the five percent reduction in customer churn or switching could result in as much as a twenty-five to eighty-five percent increase in profitability. What does this mean in English? <laughs> What it means is if you have high value customers, you need to do everything to retain them because if you have a 5% loss or switch or chain of these high value customers, your bottom line could be affected by as much as 25 to as high as 85%. Wow, so there's an exponential effect I tell you. in keeping or losing a customer on your bottom line. I tell you. Mm. I'll give you one third output. About 72% of people trust what other people say about a brand versus only their 15 percent trust in what they see in advertising. So imagine if your friends and family are telling you that a brand is not good and the advertising is saying something else, which one would you believe? 72 percent of people believe in what others say about a brand yes. versus 15 percent believe in what the brand says about itself exactly. in advertising. Yes. Hey, this is serious though. I tell you. <laughs> Okay, so moving on from there, what are you going to attach on them? Yes, so let's go into some detail about customer retention. Now, there's a journey that companies go through from acquiring customers to when these customers become, let me say, loyal. And it starts from when these customers are suspects, which is anybody and everybody in the environment. And customers or companies work hard to determine who are the prospects, that is, people who have a strong potential interest for their products and services and who have the money and the ability to pay for that. Now, these prospects, the company would wish to convert them to become first-time buyers and then also to convert them to become repeat customers. Now, customers or companies will be happy that these repeat customers stop buying competitors' products and then become clients, which means that they are fully loyal to the company and its brands and would not buy any competitor product. But that even does not end there. Companies who want to even migrate or convert these customers from clients to become advocates, where they actually praise the company and its brands, and they actually become advocates by sharing and, and talking about them, convincing their friends and family to buy them. The highest level is when these customers become what we call partners, where the company now can sit down and work closely with them to de develop and define strategy and promotions, etc. So this is the journey. Now, companies and brands have been un unsuccessful in switching, uh, sorry, in converting these customers from the different levels, as in from suspects all the way to become advocates, etc. And the reason is that we are human beings. And what happens as people fall off is what we call switching, defection, or in some other industries they call chain. Now, one would ask, how can we even measure customer, customer loyalty? Mm -hmm. Now, 
I defined customer retention as the activities and strategies that companies do in order to achieve or maintain customer loyalty. Mm -hmm. So it's important we also understand what customer loyalty is and how we actually measure it. Okay. Now, measurement of customer loyalty is done in several ways. But at a start, a company needs to define what they actually mean by loyalty okay. in their industry. For example, mm -hmm. if you go into FMCG, they may say that out of five purchases of their products, if four out of those five are for the, that particular brand, they will consider you as loyal. If you go into another industry, for example, a supermarket, maybe, I don't know, game stores, koala, whatever, they may say you need to buy a certain minimum purchase across a certain range of the products within a certain frequency of, let's say, month, every month you make that purchase over a period of, say, six months, indeed, they will consider you as loyal. Finally, if you take, say, cable TV networks and, say, magazines, subscription magazines, if a client or a, uh, a subscriber is able to renew their subscription continuously for, say, six months, indeed, they will consider you as loyal. So, so you must define what loyalty means in your industry. Exactly. It's not the same for every industry. It's not. Obviously, a loyal radio listener is not the same exactly. as a, a loyal person purchasing a bank. Exactly. So after you've defined that, what do you do? So we need to measure. Once you know in your industry how you define loyalty, then you need to know how to measure it. Okay. So I'll take a, we'll just look at two ways of measuring loyalty. Mm -hmm. And let's remember that the objective is to achieve, you want your customers to be satisfied with your products and services, mm -hmm. and we know that satisfied customers do not switch. Mm -hmm. So two ways, are one is using a, a usage rate, just yes, usage rate, or the brand health check as it's called in other places, and then customer satisfaction service. Now, if you take the brand health check or the usage um, rate, it's just simply, over time, brands going to their consumers through UNA studies, etc., and then trying to find out how many of their customers are at awareness point, how many of them have ever tried, how many of them are at recent trial, how many of them are just occasional uses, regular uses, and more importantly, most often used at that stage. And then what's important is you would this research would give you an indication of what percent of your consumers have been converted through all these stages. And if you have a high percent at the latter stage, which is loyalty or most often used brand, then you have been successful in creating loyalty. In other words, if you have 99% at awareness and you get to most often used and it is only 5%, then you know you have not been very successful in creating loyal customers. So that's the usage or the brand health check. Exactly. Mm. The second one, which I would mention, is using customer satisfaction service. And then also what is called the mystery shopper survey. Now, customer satisfaction surveys are very simple, where companies send out either periodic questionnaire or they make phone calls to a random sample of recent customers. And they want to find out which of these customers are highly satisfied which of them are just satisfied, which of them are indifferent, somewhat dissatisfied or highly dissatisfied. Now, for example, Toyota is a popular brand everywhere, and in Ghana, I'm sure the global uh, statistics would reflect in Ghana as if we did a survey here, which suggests that 75% of Toyota users are highly satisfied customers. And out of those 75%, another 75% say they would indeed rebuy a Toyota. How many of our brands <laughs> in Ghana can <laughs> give and boldly say that about themselves? A Toyota will take you anywhere. <laughs> in Ghana we say you sure it would not it would not leave you behind and I'm sure Toyota should probably come and pay me some <laughs> <laughs> so, something for do, doing the advertisement so for them. Customer satisfaction <laughs> is a key way of measuring customer retention. Exactly. The more satisfied the customer the more likely they are to stay. Yes. I see. Now, let's continue. We are still on the Management Development Month with David Aflu talking about how to keep your customers or customer retention. He's defined what it is and he's given us two measures of customer retention. What else are you going to talk about? So, even with the customer service, there's a small part which is very important, which is called the Net Promoter Score, where apart from just doing the survey, you actually pose the question to these um, customers that would they be willing to recommend the brand to their friends and families. That is the height of loyalty. So companies 
normally when they do the customer satisfaction survey, they add that. And once you can get, and that says um, you, you do, you check your promoters versus your detractors. And if you can get a strong score there, you know that you have indeed a very strong customer satisfaction. So that's the net promoter score. Yes. Which is like a plus. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because somebody could be satisfied but not be willing to tell others about it. Exactly. So it's an important parameter. Yes. So finally, on the mystery shopper, which is the second um, way of measuring customer satisfaction or, or, or customer loyalty, is where companies recruit mystery shoppers who go out and behave like potential buyers. Mm -hmm. So they will go and just in this process, mm -hmm. check what is the service quality and then what is the compliance to standards that have been laid down. Mm -hmm. And this is typical done in, in several of the service uh, sectors like oil marketing companies, etc. And they come back and then if the, the sites or the stations which are below par, they know that the assumption is that if this is what the mystery shopper went through, other customers will be going through similar and therefore they may or may not return to do a repeat purchase. Mm. Now, senior executives are normally expected to themselves do the mystery shopping mm -hmm. so that they, if they go to sites that they do not know, then they, and I'm sure you know about the Undercover Boss, which is yeah. a program on DSTV, yes, exactly. mystery shopping. So basically, yes. trying to find out for yourself what your customers experience without the, your, your staff knowing exactly. that you are the boss. Yes. That's interesting. So that's another way of measuring customer retention. Okay, so let's talk about ways of building customer loyalty. Great. So there are several ways of building customer loyalty, and I'm sure we, we have already said that satisfied customers would most probably not switch. Mm -hmm. Now, there are several types of loyal customers. Now, the hardcore loyal customer would hardly switch. Okay. <laughs> then you have a certain type of loyal customer that we call is a, is a shift shifting mm -hmm. loyal customer. Mm -hmm. That shifting loyal customer is a customer whose loyalty shifts. So <laughs> today he's here, tomorrow he's there. But he's still loyal. Hardcore and then shifting. <laughs> yes. And then there's a third type which is called a split customer. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that he's loyal to two brands at the same time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so today he, he's loyal to if it's in the milk category or the yeah, he's loyal to two brands at the same time, mm. which is different from the guy who ships. Okay. And finally, there's the guy who is not loyal to any brand he's at all. Floating. He's just a floating voter. He's a <laughs> he's a switcher. He's just moving around. Mm. And if your category is you have a lot of switches, then you need to be careful. Okay. Okay. So let's go into a little more detail. I have put down four ways of enhancing or achieving customer loyalty. All right. One is implementing a total quality marketing system. Some people also call it a total quality management system, mm -hmm. which is simply where it's an organization-wide approach to continuously improving the quality of all the organization's processes, mm -hmm. products, systems, etc. Total quality management. Exactly. TQM. Yes. <laughs> and that is why some of the car companies in Japan, etc., have been extremely successful because the comp this approach is, is a be embedded on the principle that there is an intimate relationship between product quality, service quality, customer satisfaction, and then profitability of the organization. Okay. So, question. Coming into an environment like Ghana, companies should focus not only on the product quality, but the product quality and the planning to deliver the product quality should be linked with the satisfaction that you would, you would provide, you would, the customer should get when the service is provided. So if it's a retail store where you are selling a product, it's not only the quality of the product, but the service that you offer as well should be considered and be delivered at the highest quality. And all the process that surround it and the systems and the training of the people, etc., critical. So that's total quality management. Yes. As a way of building customer loyalty. Yes. And this applies to various industries, not just the auto industry. Every, every industry <laughs> you can imagine. TQM. Yes. Good. Then we have relationship marketing, which we know and we hear about several in the banks. And this is simply the practice of building long-term satisfying relationships with key customers in order to retain their long-term preference for your brands and your, your products and services. Now, relationship marketing is hinged on delivering a, giving a promise and delivering on that promise. Mm -hmm. So that is, if you don't do that, your relationship marketing falls down. Everything else becomes noise. Mm. 
and it involves constantly engaging with your customers. So listening to them, talking to them, getting their feedback, doing what we call voice of the customer sessions, to even involve them in the development of some of your products, your services, your promotions, etc. So relationship marketing, critical. If you go into, at a higher level, it's called personalized marketing, where some companies would want to develop very strong bonds with these high value customers by individualizing and personalizing the relationship. So for these high value customers, what some of these companies would do would be to provide them with highly skilled and trained professionals to serve and support them. Sometimes I, I wonder some of the opportunities, some of the small uh, the SMEs in Ghana could have. Take a laundry business, for example. I ask myself, I, for example, take my staff to a laundry once a week. The guys know me. They have a simple system. When I get there, the guy can identify me by face. He keys on his system and he comes. All the transactions are done. He knows I come every week, let's say Saturday. Question, if the volume of business I bring to them is interesting enough, they should consider to probably say, they come and do home, home. they come and pick up the stuff from home and deliver to me at home at no extra cost. Because they can, they know when you, you bring the items. And they have locked me. With, if they do that, they have locked me. But currently, it is just a transactional relationship and there are wow. several laundries bringing up. So, question, I have no loyalty to them. It's amazing you give this example because a lot of times when we talk about customer retention, people are thinking about big brands, Vodafone and Lulu Milk, and that they are not thinking of simple things like a laundry or a watch seller. I tell you. And this example you yes. give is, is quite critical. I, at my laundry, I used to send my laundry somewhere else, and I just switched, even I, though yeah. because it's not said, I Yes. The yes. third point is loyalty programs, mm. use of loyalty programs. Now, loyalty programs typically reward customers for the frequency and the, the, with which they buy, and these customers normally buy substantial amounts. Okay. So it's frequency and the value or the volume that they buy. Mm. And these loyalty programs are supposed to reward customers, and then the company also has opportunities to upsell and to cross them, cross sell them with new products and services when they come up. Mm. So that's the loyalty yes. programs. Loyalty programs are very common. If you go into the airline industry where you are giving miles, etc., very common. You go hotel industry. Unfortunately, I don't see that happening locally. But I know, I know, and we all know that abroad, most of the the hotels run loyalty programs. Credit cards companies run um, loyalty programs. Supermarket chains run loyalty programs. I'm told one of the local small supermarkets has just started um, a loyalty program and we, we will find out how it goes. Mm. Now, I'll give you another example of an opportunity which is yet to be tapped fully in my view. And remember I worked in oil marketing so mm. I, I, I sometimes look back and say how has, that, has the industry improved and moved on. Mm -hmm. All of the major players in the oil marketing business today, that's the retail oil marketing Marketing company business today have debit cards, which they provide to companies and even individuals with their promise of convenience. So you are sure that once that wallet has money on it, you can go anywhere in the country and you don't need to worry about the money. And it also gives you controls that helps you to manage your full purchases, etc., better. Fantastic. But I see a huge opportunity several of the consumers or customers need to travel some distance in order to get to, because you are also then, on the flip side, you are tied to buy. So if you are coming and you are in traffic and you are running out of fuel, You have to look for a total I tell or you, a shell. Uh, I didn't say to you. Said just it. <laughs> so, so if you have a total or shell or yes. goil, yes. you need a station which is goil or total. Exactly. So, question. To move it to the next level, mm -hmm. I think they need to start to give something back. Which is, if you are an individual or a company which has X number, and they need to look at it and say, if you are delivering this volume, mm -hmm. we probably give you free car wash. We probably let you accu accumulate points, mm -hmm. and then you come and do free oil change, or you come and change your tires for free or something, or you go and shop in the supermarket, that's in the in the petrol f uh, mart, at a discount. So I think there are huge opportunities to build loyalty right here and it's not only the big large multinationals 
but somebody, for example, has a small David Aflu and Daughters, uh, what do you call it, oil marketing company. This is something they can implement. That's what I mean. The, the other aspect is possibly the visa concept for this, so that if I have a shell card, yes. I could use it in a total or a well or an engine or an Oando because the platform agrees. But that's possibly an industry question. Yeah. But that's yeah. a different discussion. Yeah. So you've talked about total quality management, relationship management, and personalized marketing and loyalty programs. Is that all? No. The, the fourth one, so personalized is actually part of the relationship, but the fourth and the last one mm -hmm. I'm going to address for the how to achieve customer loyalty is total customer experience. Okay. Where this is simply where companies don't want to just focus on delivering to you benefits relating to the features of the product, but to extend the experience to complementary services so that you come into an environment and then you, you as a person, your needs and your wants and your, and your desires have been planned for and taken into consideration. Give, give you another example. <laughs> Oil marketing companies, again, today you notice that several of them, you go on site, there is a fast food joint. It helps to, to, to deliver a certain experience and that you can lock your consumer's loyalty there. There are ATMs on site, so if somebody came to the station to buy, it's not typically a, a place, it's not a bank, but if you bring an ATM there, you have extended, this is some kind of horizontal... So more reasons for coming to your, your fuel station exactly. is that there could even be a bouncy castle at the I back you, for your kids to jump and play, you, yes. there's a washroom to use, exactly. there's a, all these things, in addition to the core service you need. Yes. All right. So that's the total customer experience. Yes. Applicable to all industries. Yes. One-stop shop. Amazing stuff. It's 20 minutes to the top of the hour on our Management Development Month with David Aflu. <laughs> this program is brought to you by Zenith Bank, Airtel, and the Students' Loan Trust Fund. Do you need help with funding your tertiary education? Contact the Students' Loan Trust Fund. We've since 2005 taken over from SNIT the responsibility of administering students' loans in Ghana. So contact the Students' Loan Trust Fund for a student loan today. You can call 302 Two three one eight eight six or two three one eight eight seven. You could also log on to sltf.gov.gh or email info at sltf.gov.gh. Send your questions to us this morning on zero five four nine nine eight six nine nine six. So far, we've spoken. We've defined customer retention. We have been. Uh, uh, we've been taken through two ways of measuring it and four ways of building customer loyalty. What's the next point, David? So the last point, which is causes of customer defection. Okay. So here I want to be very practical using local examples. So we, we address three causes of customer defection and then what can we do to avoid it. And uh, reducing purchasing power. The second one is poor customer service and the negative experience with the product. So reducing purchasing power. Today we know what is happening in the country. And the reality is a lot of consumers or customers, <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. the purchasing power of several people has declined, and therefore they have to make decisions to manage their budget, whether we like it or not, it's a reality. So even loyal consumers or customers are having to make difficult choices. How do companies, or how, yes, does a company manage to retain your loyal customers within this con context. So I would use an example. In certain categories, for example, evaporated milk, it's considered to be a loyal category where you don't have a lot of switches. Most of the people are loyal. Now, within that context, when purchasing power and people's disposable income is going down, what does a company do in order to retain loyalty? I will give only two examples. One option a company could consider is, for example, reducing the size. So they reduce the size. Indeed, price per gram or price per liter may go slightly up, but it means that the consumer or the customer's pocket, and there's a win-win. The company potentially may sell less in volume, but the company has retained this customer for now. There are other ways that the company may consider to manage costs. Is there any way they can cut costs either through packaging, through an ingredient? They maybe want to launch a new product with the 
same or similar um, core values, but delivering at at a, at a lower price. Is this why the toothpaste and margarine my people have this sachet type instead of the normal boxes because it's cheaper and smaller and possibly easier for people to buy in smaller bits? I will not be surprised. That is one of the reasons. So that's what you call you are trying to address reduce purchasing power exactly. because things are hard. Yes. So uh, let even people with lower incomes be able to afford the product, yes. but in a smaller size. So that you maintain them on your base and they, re they, they continue to be loyal to you. But when they get money in future, they will, they will go back to buying exactly. the, the size they used to buy. Exactly. Okay, so that's interesting. Then customer service, poor customer service. And I know this is an area which several experts have talked about severally. But I'll just make use one example to bring this to life. There is a small supermarket, which is not one of the large modern supermarkets, but there's a small supermarket where I live. Now, I stopped buying from them about four weeks ago. But this is a supermarket I bought from for about four years. And the reason is simply this. The owner sits at the counter with a calculator in hand. She has what we call a POS, or a point of sale device, and a scanner which works. However, she chooses to use the calculator. There's no price list. All the prices are from her head. And you will see long queues at the counter because she's struggling with the calculator to punch and give you the value. What is worse is on the shelves, the prices are not even current or sometimes they don't even exist at all on the shelf. <laughs> so I just noticed that something is wrong here. Either I'm being ripped off mm -hmm. I just don't feel that something is right. A few weeks after I stopped, when I need a quick emergency purchase, I might, I might pop in, but not for my planned purchase. I noticed that the numbers have dwindled at that small supermarket. Mm -hmm. Question for me is, there are some basic, simple things this small supermarket owner should do to retain customers like me or mm -hmm. people who are, are potentially defective. Mm -hmm. One. She should smile. She, you go to. It's the, me hard. Ah, massa. <laughs> she has frowned in front of the shop. Mm -hmm. She should just smile. And several of us who go there, she doesn't even bother to know our names. Can you imagine? For four years. For four years. She, she cannot address me by name. It's just good morning. So indeed, smile. Oh, you are patient. When you spent four years with her. Because it was like a need. <laughs> Suddenly, a new supermarket of similar size and range has emerged. Mm. So I have got an option. So for this. Customer, for me, these are some of the things she should do. She should fix, she should make sure the POS is working. If she can't manage it, she should get somebody to manage it. Mm. And then on the shelf, the prices should be current and they should tell you what is on the POS. So she can use her discretion to charge you for a loaf of bread and you would not. I have not yeah. been able to verify for four years. Can you imagine maybe how much <laughs> she <laughs> has ripped me off? That, that is interesting because Kojo has a story from Kumasi which is very different. We'll share that later. The, height of customer service, how her fufu, his, his fufu mm -hmm. supplier sent, basically called, after how many days of not seeing you? About six months. Oh, about six months, that's it. Yes, you know, <laughs> previously we used to go there every day, yeah. and then she would call whenever we don't go. Yes. So every week you don't go, she calls? Yes, but this time I moved to Accra, and for about six months she's not seen me. Mm -hmm. And she got somebody to video call me for her, so that wow. she would see me and see how I'm doing. Wow. And asked whether I'm getting the best fufu, or whether wow. I'm eating well and, that's and not the that. that's not the best part. What's and the she best part? sent fufu by flight. Hey. She put fufu in yes. a, a and flask said, and yes. they put it on an aeroplane <laughs> and she brought it to Accra, to in Accra. for Kojo Akoto Boatin to eat. You need to invite her to City FM and invite hey. her. Yeah. Um, her, her, her. Her name is Sister Kos and the joint is called Sister Kos Choba. In uh, which part of Kumasi? Bantuma, uh, close to the Bantuma parliament. What? <laughs> Sister Kos, you're too jamal. All listeners of City FM <laughs> in Bantuma, please move to Sister Kos now and eat fufu there. <laughs> So, so indeed, it is not only, I use this example to just show that it is not only the large multinationals who should focus on customer service. Mm -hmm. Of course, they need to as well, but the ordinary man on the street, and I like the example you gave, should also deliver the, a, the, an experience to their consumers or their customers via an excellent uh, customer ser service experience. Mm -hmm. Finally, what causes defections? from my view is negative experience with products and services. And again, I'll give one example. A friend of mine bought two smartphones from one of the 
large um, phone companies whose name I will not mention mm -hmm. from a local the local accredited dealer. Okay. And after a while, a few weeks, the screen is white when he's making calls. The phone is restarting uh, without any provocation. Oh, on his own. On his own. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. And this friend of mine has gone to his supplier. They have collected the phone, tried to fix it. It didn't work back and forth. Eventually, they said, um, it's out of warranty. They have given him back the phones. So my friend has given the phones out to some of his friends and has vowed that for that brand, never. And he's, he's now an apostle. <laughs> to, Against the brand. I tell you, a negative advocate. So he, every time someone wants to buy the brand, he says, have phone in your elemental. I tell you. But that's serious. So a negative customer experience with the product yes. can lead to a, a, a brand enemy, <laughs> which is always a brand ambassador. All right. So you've spoken about causes of customer defection. So what does all this mean for the listeners? So for me, um, you may be a senior or junior executive in your company, a small business owner, a would-be entrepreneur, or a student. For me. If you listen carefully, each of us can pick something from this. Mm -hmm. But the summary for me is customer retention is hard work. It requires a lot of diligence to maintain the current customer base and to grow it continuously. We do not need to focus on recruitment alone of new customers, but let's also focus on growing the base and trying to extract more value from the base that we have. Thank you very much. Send us your comments by way of text 0549986996. If you have questions to ask, you could also tweet at me at Ben Koku or at City973. Could you we're gonna read a few quick comments <laughs> and then ask some questions on our own? First question. Um, so companies need to place high priority on customer service, but at what point should a company give up on a very bad customer, if there's something like that? There are some customers who are never satisfied with anything that's, that is given them. At what point must we give up on them? Okay, I'll answer it this way. If the value the customer brings you is extremely low, and, and yet this customer is just a, con a continuous pain. For me, that is the consideration I would make. But I'll put in a caveat. Also consider the bad press or the bad social media this customer can give. I left one, one of the survey out, uh, outcomes. One of them said 28% of your unhappy customers, at least in the US, would post a negative comment about you on social media. Hey, 28%? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> that one, it means that you have to make sure they don't... <laughs> anyway. Could you go on? Well, Andrew says, uh, good job, Mr. Flu. Spot on contribution on loyalty and customer retention. And this one says, impressive presentation on customer retention and loyalty from Mr. David Flu is very insightful mm. from Valerie. David says, good morning, Bernard. Uh, customers are very essential to the survival of any organization. Without customers, organizations cease to exist. And as organizations need to understand the concept of customer heterogeneity. That is, understand that all customers are not the same, therefore must be treated differently. Organizations must also move away from the concept of product centricity to customer centricity. Finally, understanding the principle of 80-20 rule and the concept of product service personalization and also rewarding loyal customers will enable organizations to acquire and retain customers. Now, David, that's quite profound. My comment, a question to you, David, in studio from David Osabute. What does he mean by customer heterogeneity, where he's suggesting that we shouldn't treat customers the same? Is that a good thing to do? Do you treat customers different based on who they are? Yes, I, I think um, now marketers should not treat all customers the same. Oh, really? No. Why? <laughs> different customers have different needs and different wants. Mm. So customers should be treated based on their needs and wants. So if you, your desire, assuming you are on a loyalty program with your airline mm -hmm. and you want to go to the World Cup, another, another guy wants to go to Cape Coast, or he wants to sit at home and, and, and spend it with his family at home. So we cannot and should not treat all customers the same because their needs and wants are different. And what? they even bring different value 
to the business, those who deliver for you high value. I know companies who have taken their, some of their high value com com uh, customers to the Grand Prix oh, in yeah. Ghana. Just to keep them happy. Yes. So you gave us four distinctions. You gave us hardcore, shifting, split, and floating. So do you just leave the hardcore because they're already hardcore? I don't do anything to them. And focus on the shifting. Or do you spend more time on the hardcore to make them harder core? So that is why those four we talked about, it's like an engine. You need to continue to service the relationship. You need to f continue to fuel the engine because they are human beings. They are not machines. Mm. Today he may be a hardcore, but tomorrow circumstances may change. If you upset him, and some of those guys, when you upset them, they may punish you more because they believe they have been so loyal to you that they would probably not forgive you for a blunder that some other um, consumer who has less loyalty to you would do. Mm. Comment from Michael Ipo. Bernard, I hope you have certificates ready for listeners who attend your Radio Management Month Quasi MBA course at the end of the month. Michael, I don't have certificates, but you will get a competence that you cannot replicate anywhere else. Kobla Kujawu says, this people via airplane, dear. Hmm. By the way, is Sister Akos of Kumasi married? Kujo will be the best person. She's married. She's, she's a very old woman, about 50, 55. She's very married with children. And she applies customer service principles to her people. Fantastic customer service, Bernard. More comments. Rachel Glassu says, Bernard, we are listening live in the office. CEO and everybody. Great stuff at Now Solutions Limited. The small and medium-sized industries interest in me because they don't have the traditional marketing concepts and they don't seem to bother about customer service as much as they should. You've dealt with SMEs in your last job. What is the potential for SMEs in applying these principles? It's easy to see how this applies to big, big companies. But talking about chop bars, food sellers, laundry service, and how significant are these tools for these kinds of organizations? I'll give an example. There's a guy who sells shoes on the street. A radio station interviewed him. I don't know who, which station. I have met him like three times in different locations. He's well dressed. He wears a tie all the time, and he's carrying like four pairs of shoes in his hands. Some dark guy. Yes, slim. Yes. I think he has differentiated himself out of the lot. If I wanted to buy a shoe, one, I think his presentation. It's it comes emotionally. He's he's sending a certain message. Mm -hmm. He's he's. He was interviewed on one station, and he speaks eloquently. Yes. If he was engaged by somebody, I'm sure that the shoes he sold would be of a certain quality. So, and the service that you, you pro, he's providing with it, I think, is the same as we are talking about here. I use the laundry example, and I can assure you, if any laundry did some of the things we mentioned by differentiating their frequent customers who are heavy, uh, buy a, they, they bring in a lot of uh, business to them weekly or at a certain frequency. I can tell you they would easily differentiate themselves within the market and they will soar and they would grow. Mm. If I read from Lasses, personally, I think that customers, customer care is most important in developing the business. We couldn't agree with you any less. Giving you twice as much fun is what Airtel promises, twice as extreme online because. We're giving away 100% more bonus with our data. Do whatever you like with your data credit from as little as 50 pesos because anything you, any time rather you, you top up with 10, 20, 30, or 50 megabytes, you get double the amount to do whatever you like. Dial star 125 hash and activate Airtel data double so you can hook up with friends any way you like, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Enjoy the awesome internet experience with Airtel's double data from Ghana's fastest 3.75 G network. We have time for one final question, and I'm giving that question to Kojo. Well, um, when we had the sales session, we, we, we were made to know that the salesman is one primary point of uh, call when it comes to customer service and all that. What, if you are to grade the salesman as a customer of, their own, of his own services and products that he sells, what would be the grading? We give the salesman because you give us four categories of customers. Where do we put the salesman? Because he needs to believe in the products and services he's pushing out there before he gets us straight to the customer. Hmm. I'm not sure I've understood the question. 
okay, in, in every business, the salesman is one primary person, the soldier. It's like the one who faces the customer. The customer. So, it, so if you are to, and the salesman must understand and believe in the products and services before he pushes it out there. How do we grade the salesman as a customer if you are to grade it among the four categories you gave us? No, but that's, I, okay, go on. I, I, so, I don't know how. So, so let me answer it this way. Mm. A salesman for me is both a hunter and a farmer. What does a hunter do? A hunter goes out every day to hunt for new things. So the salesman for me is acquiring, seeking new sales opportunities. But at the same time, he's a farmer because what he has as the base, he needs to mine that base so that the, 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 we can extract more value from the base. If I look at the four areas that we have, I think each of those lines, the salesman have a part to play. Total quality management, he has to be there. Relationship ma management or marketing, for me, is all about salesman and some customer people who are mostly in this relationship driven again by customer people. And then finally, total experience, that is some, but once it's a customer facing area, you would have the salesman sitting there trying to uh, pass the service on to the customer. David Aflu, our guest from PZ Customs, is a commercial director, s taking us through what customer retention is and how we can do same. Well, you can tune in again tonight at 7 p.m. for a replay. Uh, thank you very much, David. It's been such an enlightening experience. Let me say happy birthday belated.